Well, hello, Coffee Time friends. I think you all are here. I hope we have a good video day today. We've got you raised up a little bit because I'm hoping I can just tilt you down. It is me, John and Mama, here with Coffee Time with John and Mama. And we just want to uh, invite you all into our kitchen. Have a seat. Get you a cup of coffee. How about a glass of tea? Whatever you like. And we're going to cook a while. So today we're making my cowboy coat slaw. And the reason I call it mine because it really is. Uh, and it's in the church book, and right there's my name, just in case you didn't know. Is this the first time we've made something out of the cookbook of mine? I don't know. Can't remember. So here's the ingredients. <clears throat> I'll cheat less today, since it really is my recipe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so cowboy coleslaw. What makes it cowboy is just it's got more stuff in it than cabbage and carrots. So it's two tablespoons of sugar. Two tablespoons of red wine vinegar, one cup of mayonnaise of your choice. One can of petite diced tomatoes or diced tomatoes, you don't have to buy specifically. One package of coleslaw mix. Now I do use the mix in this and if I don't have the mix, I cut it with a knife. I want it to be coarser. I don't want finely ground. I don't want it through the chopper. Um, one package of coleslaw mix. One can of corn, whole kernel corn. One can of black beans rinsed and drained. Make sure you drain them good and make sure you rinse them good. One cup of onions chopped, and I like purple onions, red onions, whatever you want to call it. One package of romaine noodles, and it really don't matter the flavor because we don't use the flavor pack anyway. Um, one t a teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of pepper, one teaspoon of Morton's Nature Seasoning, and that's just because we love it. You don't have to use it. And then one cup of freshly shredded cheddar cheese straight out of the bag. <laughs> then there we go. Mama, you're in charge of the recipe. Oh, boy. Okay, we'll read you the how-tos in a minute, but I I'm going to show you the how-tos. I didn't get the spoons out. I've got one here. Uh, okay. Mama's getting the measuring spoons. Okay, what are y'all up to today? Hey, Mama and John, are you both looking? Well, thank you. Marsha, how are you? Listen, last night after we got off, I don't see everybody's post. Wish we could. I wish there was some way that magically I had a big screen and I could just see everybody's post and I could have someone here to read them and it would be great. But that's not the way it works. So, I did find a post last night I want to mention today, a comment. This came from Sherry Johnson. And she asked me last night to do a shout-out for her grandmother. Um, and she said her grandmother watches us all the time. So, if you are Sherry Johnson's uh, grandmother, Miss Catherine, happy birthday on your next birthday. She says she's going to be 100. Yay, Let's all give her a wonderful birthday. round of applause. Yay, happy birthday. Miss Catherine, we love you. We thank you for watching and we hope you have a wonderful, wonderful birthday and many more to come. So you get with us every year and we'll just wish you happy birthday over and over. So just keep on watching and thank you so much. Thank so you. happy, happy birthday. All right, folks, this recipe is delicious and believe it or not, I wasn't going to take this for our church thing, and I asked someone to bring something uh, that they weren't going to bring, uh, which it was a hash brown casserole, and it was our pastor's wife, and she does a great job with it. And I said, are you bringing hash brown casserole? And she said, if you'll bring cowboy coats law, <laughs> you talk about negotiating. <laughs> I said, I will. I will do that. So that's the reason I'm making cowboy coleslaw for tomorrow. All right. So let's get started. So what I start with, Mama, what does the direction say? Two tablespoons of sugar. You better get the table. I'll get the tablespoon. Because that spoon will not hold the tablespoon. No, ma'am. So this is two tablespoons of sugar. One. One and two. I need that tablespoon. You need it. Table, two tablespoons of red wine vinegar. This is all new to me, folks. I've made this a bunch of bunch of times, but all this measuring that comes along with this. Someone asked me if red wine vinegar had red red, red wine. Yeah, I've not been drinking this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and someone sent us this, and we appreciate it, uh, Miss um, Pam. 
sent this? What's it? No, I maybe it's Angela. Angela Britt sent this. Miss Angela Britt sent us this. Uh, thank you, Miss Angela. We love it. It's a good flavor. I think it's going to be my new red wine vinegar. Uh, it does have a little bit of red wine vinegar in it, or a little red wine in it. I did look it up. But it said you could never drink it enough, or it's, it's just for flavor, mostly. So, you can turn me in, but this is, we use it. We've used it my whole life. One of these, two of these. Two of those, please. Two of these tablespoons of red wine vinegar. I had never even considered that it really had any wine in it. I just figured they called it that. I, I did too. <laughs> Me and Mama's simple like that. We don't. Okay, and now one cup of mayonnaise. Please. Okay, but before we do that, in the bowl here, I'm going to touch y'all down so you can see in the bowl. I was hoping this would work. Yeah, oh, yeah. I was hoping we could get high. Enough. Okay, there we can see. You can see. So in this mixing bowl, I'm just going to um, stir this around a little bit, and you'll see that sugar start to dissolve. And I'm going to tilt it this time, give it a little pull there, and give it a good sift. You don't have to do it long. You just want to give that sugar a chance. And I would be hitting it a little harder, but it'll make a ton of noise. Is that too much noise? Probably. Blame it on Mama. Soft. Okay, so it's almost dissolved. You can see there. You can pull it back and forth. You can see there's not a lot of granulars on the bottom. And it will continue to dissolve some. So I'm going to lay that down. One cup of mayonnaise. One whole cup of mayonnaise. Now look at these. These are definitely mamas. Look at these. That's the new color. New color of uh, Tupperware measuring. measuring cups. I like the red the best. But there's no, uh, before y'all ask, there is no pink measuring spoons yet that could happen who knows but these would be good for a housewarming gift I guess they came out with for Easter didn't they? I think so maybe. but you know they would be good in October for breast cancer awareness month oh yes that would be, uh, great. be a great gift if you know someone and I would say this could be the only set of pink measuring cups they would ever own I don't know. Tupperware probably had some before. But. All right. So that is one good heaping cup of Duke's mayonnaise. You use whatever mayonnaise you use, and it'll be delicious. There's nothing wrong with all of them. Sometimes, sometimes, uh, everybody has their favorites, but they're all good. So I'm going to put this whole cup of Duke's right in there. Every drop in the pool. Okay, you cleaned that good. Mama, we won't have to wash this. I'll just put it back in the drawer. I think we washed it a little bit anyway. It's clean though. But... <laughs> I knew that gets your attention, Mama. Oh, yeah. I'm going to tell y'all something. We have a full kitchen at my work. And we have hot water and everything. And we have dish liquid. And when I take lunch bowls to work, I wash them every time and I bring them home. And I started putting them in the cabinet. I said, ah, I gotta wash that. I said, I just washed it and put it back in this bag and brought it home. I will wash it again. And she rewashes them even though they're clean because they've been out of the house. Are y'all that way? They've been transported. You don't know what they've been around. I don't know what they've been around, Mama. They've been in that clean bag. Brought yeah. back home. I still wash them. They've been out of this house, she said. Don't you put them in my cabinet. So you can see how funny it would be for me to act like I wasn't even going to wash that measuring cup. So now I've made, basically, I've made a base for any kind of dressing you want to start with. You could use this with ranch. You can use this with a Thousand Island. You can use this with honey mustard. You can use this base for all kinds of wonderful dressings. Just add different stuff with it. The red wine vinegar, a little bit of sugar. You could use stevia if somebody's going to ask that. Uh, all those things will work deliciously with this base right here. So today it's going to be a coleslaw base. Now at the very end, I may have to add a little bit more Dukes. So we'll see. 
that's just, you know, this is just what we're starting out with. So now what's next, Mama? Okay, it says add your coleslaw mix. This is just a bag of the pre-made. This is three color deli coleslaw, and I do like to get that because of the purple and the different colors in there. It makes it very pretty. So I'm just going to add this whole bag right in here. I thought I got that in that mayonnaise, but I think it maybe did. Now a bag will go farther than you think it will. It's kind of compressed in there. There's quite a bit in these bags. And watch and get the shredded instead of the little fine chopped. Yeah, they had chopped at one store. We was in the big city and I said, I better get my coleslaw on me. I had to come back to Save Lux to find this because they had the chopped. Very fine. Very fine. This this um, calls for a, a cowboy kind of coleslaw. This is this is not your little chop. This is your bigger stuff. And I'm just going to stir this in with that mayonnaise. I'm going to use this whisk. Just going to try to coat all this cabbage. I think I can use this batch a little bit better. Try to coat all this cab. Oh yeah, I'll use the spatula. Try to coat all this cabbage in that wonderful dressing. This just helps to get the flavors on every piece before you start adding your other stuff. Um, now actually, 100% you could serve this just like this and you're got coleslaw. Because that is like what you would make for Sunday lunch. So we've got our coleslaw made here. Now we're going to add the cowboy version. Now here it says add the tomatoes. Add the tomatoes. I'm going to dump them for you. There we go. Thank you, Mama. This over there out of the way. And then the black beans. Ah, uh, I've got that for you. This is a can and some black beans. We made, um, oh, that, um, that chicken chili we made. We didn't put black beans in it. No, it says add corn after the tomatoes and onions and black beans. So uh, we well, can just dump them all in the pool. They're all going in together. Yeah. This is can I had some left. I made something. And I had chicken just fajitas. A, chicken fajitas the other day for lunch. And so I had a little bit of black beans. So I just added one of these and rinsed them. So this is a little over a 15 ounce can. But you're just going to have a 15 ounce can unless you had fajitas for lunch the day before too. Go ahead and add them in. It ain't going to hurt. It's not an exact science. You want to start with a big bowl because this makes a lot of stuff. And this is corn, drained. I didn't rinse the corn, but I did drain the corn. Got to get all that. Okay, and your uh, onions. Now on this, Tomatoes, I'm just... Tomatoes, corn, onions, and black beans. I just sliced a big old thick slice of onion because I want it to be in there just for a little bit of flavor. But I don't want it to overpower, and I'm going to let it set till in the morning. So I don't want it to be the star of the show. I just want it to be. In fact, I'm probably not going to put it in there. What I'm going to do with this onion is I'm going to set it aside. I'm going to put it in a Ziploc bag. And then in the morning, when I add my Roma noodles, I'm going to stir this onion in there. Because overnight, an onion can do a lot of negotiating with all the other stuff in there and take it over. And once that happens, there ain't no going back from that. You can't add anything to get the onion flavor calm back down. So you just want enough. Uh, oh, there's a cookbook alarm. Lisa Patrick. Miss Lisa Patrick, you're the first person on there. And you got the first cookbook. Mama, show her what she wants. Oh, you can do like Vanna. Church cookbook here. What we're getting a coleslaw off of. It's the 16. church cookbook. This is not a cook along, but I told you since it's going to be so long since we do another cook along, that we would do um, cookbook giveaways today too. I've got too many messages, too many memos to keep up with here. So, so let's get this night. Oh, y'all move. Lisa, come back down there. Lisa, Lisa, I was thinking. looking for a pen. She, it's moved quite a bit. Lisa Patrick, I remember your name. I'm going to write it down here. Lisa, PM me your address. Lisa Patrick. Okay. 
Nothing like preparation. Didn't even have it pinned together. Lisa Patrick. PM me your address. First cookbook. Okay. First cookbook. I'm using Mama's phone as alarm because Alexa's still on her vacation. Evidently, oh, Alexa got spring break until Tuesday because that's when AT&T says they'll have our internet back up. Uh, it's only been down five days. <laughs> I mean, could you imagine five days with no internet at your house? Mama's getting cranky. She's got solitaire, though. I still have something to do. you got plenty to do, Mama. So I'm just going to chop this onion up. And like I said, I would normally, if we are going to eat this this afternoon, I'd go ahead and dump this in there. But I just thought a better way, hadn't I, Mama? Yeah, you better. So it'll be fresh tasting. I want to be fresh. Fresh is best. So that's all you do now, except your... Uh, your salt and pepper and Easter season. Right, so here's and the onion. Are you going to wait till tomorrow to put the cheese to? Mm, I don't think so. Here's the onion. I'm going to lay it aside, but it is going in there. Eventually, I, I dropped the knife. Everything went, and nothing spilled. It was a yeah, miracle right there. You all wouldn't believe what a miracle just occurred. Now, these are just your average baby carrots, and I'm going to put them in the chopper. This is just for color. That, I think you're going to have a ton if you keep them, or the big ones. That coleslaw uh, mix has got a lot of stuff in it, but I like a little bit of extra carrot just for that beautiful, bright orange color. This will be a little noisy, but the noise will subside shortly. Shortly. After it gets started. And I've got them jammed in there. No, naturally. You're going to You know me, Mama. Carrots is one of the harder substances. Well, if you don't jam them, they work out fine. But I get a little over-eager. Those will be beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. Do y'all do church potlucks? We have it since the COVID came on. But we do a great job. Um, we set the buffet and we have some lovely ladies and gentlemen that uh, glove up and serve. And so there's really very little cross-contamination with that. And uh, most of the food is hot, but... Uh, we have a microwave there, and you can always put your plate in there for 20 seconds, and they say that'll take care of it. So here's those carrots, and I'm going to just add what I think here, just to give, look at that beautiful color, punch of color. Y'all say, look what, John, you want to show us the bow? Sorry, folks. I pulled it up because the alarm went off. Forgot to tilt it back. Look at that beautiful, oh, that's heavy, beautiful orange color in there. Oh now, what did you say to add? Your uh, carrots, and then you leave your noodles for in the morning, and salt and, and pepper and nature season. How and much cheese. salt? Uh, One salt tablespoon? Salt is a tablespoon. No, a teaspoon, I'm sorry. One teaspoon. I'm sorry to say, not a table. Teaspoon of salt, teaspoon of pepper, and a teaspoon of morning season. So here we go. We have got a teaspoon of salt coming. So there's a teaspoon of salt. Better turn that back around. Woo, that would be bad to leave that turned on, on pour. Because we also use it for a shaker. And here's a teaspoon of black pepper. This is just table pepper. Little went overboard. So I use a scant less. A scant less. And then our favorite seasoning, Morton's Nature Seasoning. <laughs> Did you get pepper down yourself? Just a little bit. 
Who? Pepper. Oh, it's no match for good hot coffee, though. Morton's Nature Season, and it says a teaspoon of it. I shook it up. I'm putting a heavy teaspoon because I love it. I'll take that to that Yes, ma'am. And what else does it say? That's all for right now. The cheese. The a cheese. cup of cheddar cheese. But I would mix that before I put the cheese because it would cut those strips of cheese and won't come off from it good. Okay, Mama. Mama says it. don't add your cheese till you mix it. How's that pepper get on a piece of cheese and you'll have a black piece of cheese? <laughs> Choke somebody at first. Oh, mercy, Mama. Okay. Now look how beautiful this dish is. It's one of my favorites. Because it's so pretty. You may have mama. It is a beautiful dish. It has a wonderful flavor. And um, if you like coleslaw and stuff, most people like this. So there it is. Cowboy coleslaw. And um, I have paired this with uh, barbecue. I have put this with fish. We have used this with a lot of different main dishes. It's even good with pork chops. So any of those things are delicious with it. The only thing left to put in it, are you wanting to put the cheese in in the morning? Is that what you're wanting? I don't know. It shouldn't hurt the cheese. It will the noodles, so it make them soggy. Okay, so go ahead and put us a cup of cheese in here. And then I will add that onion in the morning and uh, stir it in well, and I'll add messy. now on the Roma noodles here's an important thing all you do to these is you want to break these up in the package not to powder you don't want to dough roll them you just want to break them up and then at the very last thing and I usually take this package with me unopened to the event <clears throat> and then when I take the lid off and stick it under the bowl. You know how y'all do. When you go to church night, you take your lid off. What do you do with that lid? Well, on this Tupperware, you stick it right under the bowl, and it's there. And then I take my Romas. I put this on top of the lid until it's time to take the lid off. And then I just sprinkle these on top. But if you're going to serve this at home, just do it right before you serve it. All this does is add a little crunch to your coleslaw. So if you don't have this, you can certainly omit it. And that's it. So it's ready to go. That little flavor pack in there, we don't use it. Here goes that cup of cheddar cheese right in here. One more little tub there. And I'm going to stir him right in. Now this cold slaw is ch coarsely chopped. So you're going to have big pieces, little pieces, but that's okay. The cheese makes it prettier, actually. So that's the cowboy coleslaw. We'll find a container that this will fit. This is a little big. This is just for mixing. Uh, but we'll find a container that that will fit in and... We're good to go, Mama. And all we have to add in the morning is stir in your onions and put your noodles, take your noodles mm -hmm. with you and put them on at church. And that was quick and easy. And just think if, if I wasn't talking and messing around, you could do that much quicker at home. Okay, let's see what y'all are. Oh, I froze y'all up. Oh, get it going because the timer will go off. Um, add that onion, sure. Sheila... I would, I would if it was just going to be here, but some people don't like onion, and it will get strong. This is a red onion. It's not terribly strong. This one's not, but I'm going to wait till in the morning, and then I'll stir it in, and it'll be good to go. And uh, then I'll put the ramen noodles on right before we serve it. It is colorful, Rachel, and that's one of the things I think it's it has such a good presentation. Uh, I might take it in a clear bowl. Um, 
just so you can see all those colors on the side. It says, hey, John and Mama, big... Well, hello, Michael Johnson. How are you? You're from. He is. He says he is from uh, uh, the real upstate New York. Oh, the real. The real upstate, Michael. Uh, the food chopper. Someone sent me a message about the food. It's on Mama's website on the Tupperware. It's not on sale this month. Thank you for those stars. Victoria, that was so gracious of you. Thank you so much. Um, it's not it's not on sale at this current time, but it's still a great product, and we use it almost every time we could. Um, it's one of those things like the Micro Pro Grill. Once you use it, it's just impossible not to because of the time you save. When you buy when you buy a chopper from Tupperware or wherever you get a chopper, I guess I mean it doesn't matter. It's just a time saver, uh, and you're. Um, you're buying time is what you're buying. Uh, hey, Kimberly, thank you for those stars. Hey, Joanne. Y'all skipped up. Hey, thank you for the stars. Is there a stars party going on? Everybody, thank you all. It's so kind of y'all. We use we try to use the star money. We buy the cookbooks from the church, and then that's where the cookbooks come from for the appreciation gifts for you all. Um, and it's... We don't take them from the church. We purchase, we purchase them. We actually write a check, just like you all do, put it in there. Thank you. Uh, we did get a party. Thank Yay. you all. Mama, there's Yay. your party. Oh, Mama pretty. loves to see the colors. That's pretty. And Thank you all. Her. All right, Mama. You're good to go. Um, but the stars, that's what we would like to do. It just makes a big circle of love. You all... Um, uh, send them to us, we use them, and the church gets benefit from them, and then we turn around, we can give you all cookbooks. Uh, making the green salad, oh, that green salad is wonderful, pistachio salad. You want to show them what little dab we got left? Sure, Mama. <laughs> Mama's going to show you what we have left, we didn't waste none of that. Thank you for the stars, Beth. There you go. Here is ours, what we made the other night. We can wash that bowl up and put it in it. See, it's still beautiful. Look at those. The marshmallows kind of take on a brighter color after you put them in the refrigerator. And if you put that uh, coconut in there, that green coconut, it looks just like little eggs tucked down in grass. It's wonderful for your Easter table. It's something exciting. to. The kids will love it. You can even put some... Um, <clears throat> peeps, little bunny peeps on there. You can make a whole little decorative dessert for your Easter table. Uh, all the cookbooks got ruined. Oh, and a basement flood. Darla, we had a basement flood one time too. We lost a lot. We lost a lot of things. You know, you put, you put your things away for safekeeping or saving for another day. We never had water in our basement. We had, at one time we had carpet and there was a floor model TV and furniture. All of a sudden we had a leak and it was, everything was destroyed down there. Uh, thank you, Deanna. Thank you, Terry. How are you all? What are you all eating today? Mama, what are we eating today? What am I talking about? We ain't even picked up nothing to eat today. Cowboy coats was looking good. <laughs> well, thank you for those stars, Christina. Oh, it's a star. Here we go. Teresa S H S C H. That, that will just keep going. Uh, Teresa, I don't want to destroy your name. Let me get it right here. Uh, Teresa Bacuz Shaliv. How bad did I do? Teresa. Spell it. B a s q u e z hyphen s c h l i e v e. Send us your PM and your address, Teresa. I'm gonna write your name down because I will. I won't be able to spell that in a minute. Teresa, PM me your address, and we will get you a cookbook out. And Teresa and Lisa, they will, um, we're rhyming here. Teresa and Lisa, the cookbooks, you shouldn't have to wait long for them. We're expecting them to be shipped 
this week, early week. So hopefully they will be here on Monday or Tuesday. And we will get those right out to you. Mama has already, anyone who has pre-ordered already, um, or ordered during the gap, we call it. We, um, Mama's already got your envelopes ready. All we have to do when we get them is stuff them, take them out the next day. So really, it's almost like we didn't have a gap this time because it was, uh, we just took cookbooks last week. So, Teresa, PM me your address. I'll be looking right after the video. Uh, hello from Southwestern North Carolina. Wow. We love North Carolina. We love North Carolina, Glenda. Are you going to be able to get... Oh, the blue check mark, Wanda? I hope so. That would relieve our minds just knowing that you all could depend on that blue check mark. Um... We need to, I guess, send in for it again. We have sent in and sent in. They sell. Not yet. Keep hoping. Fried bologna with tomatoes, onions, and Duke's mayonnaise on toast for wow. supper. What, Tim? Tina? Tina, that sounds delicious. I take these new glasses. I see some things better, but it seems like I'm getting used to my bifocals all over again. Hello from cold Ohio. At least it's cold here. I sat this morning. Drank my coffee and watched a blizzard. It came a blizzard here, and then it, it didn't lay, it didn't stay. Hey, Laura Daniels, how are you? Sauerkraut wiener soup, beans, and cornbread. Oh, that sounds oh, good too. I like sauerkraut. Mm. I ate cheesy buffalo chicken patties. Cheesy, Sandy. What was cheesy? Was it blue cheese? I have a stomach bug. So, ah, Kimberly, prayers for you, Kimberly Britt. Um, it's a going around here, too. That so. is bad times. We will be sending prayers out. Chicken fingers and coleslaw. Well, Betty, we've even got the coleslaw. We could go for a brief a brief rain shower. We'll begin here in Jellico. It says just flashed up there. Uh, so I guess we're getting some rain now. Hey, Steve Thornton, how are you? Hey, Susan. Hey, Anthony. Spaghetti and garlic bread. Oh, that sounds good. Anthony, that sounds good. Uh, what's the weather like there? Jimmy Bruce, it is... Well, Alexa's not working this. She's on vacation. I, I didn't even know she had applied for a vacation. <laughs> and here we are having to deal without her. Uh, it is... What did you say the temperature was earlier, Mama? 40-something. Uh, 40 46 or something. I can tell you right here. And it was a uh, sleety and rainy and snowy mixture. So. Let's see here. I'll tell you it's the temperature. Temperature is... Mama, your phone's got all kinds of information. 43, 43 degrees. And it looks like we're going to get some... Let's see what the forecast is looking at like. Well, it looks like there's not much more precipitation. It's showing sunshine tomorrow. That'll be a change because we've not had much of that. And look at the temperature for tomorrow. Sunday's going to be 68. <laughs> Monday here, it looks like 70, 42 with clouds. Then we go back to rain on Tuesday and Wednesday, but we're in the 70s. 73, 77, Thursday 70, Friday 70, Saturday 68. This, this weather this year, you know... It's barring a lot of days. Weather is weather is up and down this year. Have y'all noticed? It seems like in these winters, I've not been able to tell one from the other this year. Usually we have distinct, you know, little cold spells. And it'll get warm and you think, oh, everybody's, oh, it's time they'll buy flowers. They don't know the May 10th rule. A lot of these folks mm -hmm. around here. Some of these youngins uh, are not... Uh, some of these youngins are not savvy on the May 10th rule. We don't buy flowers here until May 10th, usually. We bought them last year, and it's a little... We got in a hurry like everybody else, but we kept them in the garage. Uh, but, uh, yeah, you've got to be careful getting them too soon, because until May 10th, you ain't in the clear. A barbecue chicken. Oh, that sounds so good, Roseanne. 
barbecue chicken. I ain't had good barbecue chicken, Mama. That's you've something we need to put on our menu. You've got some cooked chicken in there. You could pour a barbecue on it. That is so true, Mama. That would sandwich. be good. It won't be the same as barbecue, barbecue chicken, chicken, but it'll be a barbecue. Mama don't like thighs and legs, chicken, you know, for like in the barbecue. She'll eat them, but it ain't her favorite. She only likes wings, really. Wings and breast. Wings and breasts. Swipe me. But if, she, if you had a breast and a wing laying there, she would always pick the wing. I always pick the wing. I'm having BLT, so. You know, Linda, we Linda, Mama one. never did fix them BLTs, she promised me. We never did get the BLTs, Mama. We had meetings and cut. And I I'm going to make corn meal, meal fried tater soup. Beans. Hi from Mer uh, Perry, oh hi. Well, hello, Kathy. Uh, Janet, 85 and sunny in Spring, Texas. Beautiful. Janet, that is wonderful. We're going to get some that looks like next week. Push it on up I made mac and cheese and we'll have kielbasa with it. Oh, yeah, Judy, that sounds great. Sounds great. 37 feels like 28 and snow at the top of Ohio. Peg Hill it is here too. It's 40 feels like cold up there. I took Maggie out earlier and I thought, girl, hurry. It's cold. <laughs> she didn't, I didn't have to tell her twice. She was out there and in here before I could bat an eye. She was not laying in the grass today. I like wings too. Angela Britt, those are good. I like a wing. Um... But not as good as I do, uh, like a big old juicy breast. I love legs, and I love the thighs. I didn't even eat legs when I was little. I the dark ate. meat has a better flavor, and it's it sometimes got more fat, I guess. I don't know. But I love those good, you know those that they show on TV where it's the whole thigh and the leg, and it's just basted perfectly. Mm, now that's some good eating. And I love them on the grill the same way. Loaded baked potato soup here, Vicky. We had that, um, oh, Mama, we've got that soup. We had that uh, chicken, white chicken chili last night, oh, and it was really good. And I'm that. thinking, and I bought some when I was at the big store, the, not the big store, I was at the in the big city, and we went to uh, Food City. <coughs> they had the spinach tortilla shells. I love those. I don't know why. I mean, you know, I've tasted them. I'm like, I don't taste it. Maybe they're just green. I don't know, but I think they taste good anyway. And uh, I think that maybe putting some of that in those and wrapping them up, you know, heating it, wrapping up, putting a little sour cream, a little cheese, and having that today for lunch. Well, I call it lunch. It's past lunch. It'll be supper. Yeah. Frost warning, Robin, in South Carolina. Oh, they're mm. cold, too. Uh, Dorothy says, show the address to order the cookbook. Yes, ma'am. Let me just get that right out here. It's a fancy thing. Oh, yeah. Graphics is expensive, folks, when you're trying to do graphics. <laughs> this is our address. This looks backwards to me so you all say sometimes that's right for you just send your order it's $17 and the $17 does cover the shipping and everything John Davis PO Box 918 Jellicoe Tennessee 37762 if that looks backwards to you don't fret if this looks right screenshot it if that looks backwards I can turn it over and there you are and it's right so John Davis PO Box 918 Jellicoe Tennessee 37762 so that's the address for the cookbooks. And while we're sitting here, I'll show you the cookbook. It's laying on top of the cake plate, ain't it? Yes, ma'am. This is the cookbook. And that's the picture. That's not our church, but it's very similar looking to our church. Uh, I love this, this little church picture. It says, Recipes and Remembrances. And that's the title of the book, and it's Oswego Missionary Baptist Church. Once you get inside of our cookbook, it is divided with these pretty little dividers. Here's appetizers and beverages. And over here's the index, so you can look up what page you need to be on the table of contents. And then behind every one of these little header pages is helpful hints about that page, about those products, or about that topic, whatever it is, all the way through the book. 
And then, when you come over here, here's soups and salads. And behind that page, just hints about soups and salads. It goes all the way through the book that way. Every little page has an opening page, breads, and rolls, and then there's a helpful hints. In the back of the book is also microwavable hints. Two pages of those. Tons of those. Tells you a little thing. Here is food quantities and uh, cooking terms. Maybe you're a new cook. You know, a lot of times you cook for years. You think everybody knows what uh, Blanche is. Blanche is more than a character on the Golden Girls. <laughs> Blanche is to immerse in rapidly boiling water and allow to cook slightly. Like if it says to blanch your tomatoes, then you would have boiling water. You would take your spider. That's another term, which is that big metal thing that's got the rings around it. It holds your food. You can dip it in there and hold it. And you would immerse it for 30 seconds, pick it up, and you would could peel uh, the, the peeling off very easily. What about dredge? Dredge is a term to coat lightly with flour, cornmeal, etc. Now, we may say that... In, and just think, well, everybody knows what dredge is. Dredge your chicken, dredge your fish, dredge your vegetables. You may not know. Dredge means to lightly coat with flour or cornmeal. So there, those terms are helpful for beginners. Measurement substitutions. Here's equivalency charts. So if you want a half in a recipe, fourth the recipe, there it is. And here is some napkin folding. I thought we may do some napkin folding before Easter. Um, just to show you some of these and maybe go through this and say here's how you can fold some napkins. Uh, it's step by step how you fold them and it's just something if you want to decorate your table or as mama calls it putting on airs for the company. Um, vegetables and fruits. It really isn't putting on airs. We just say that. It's just putting your best foot forward. It's just bringing out your best. It's just letting your guests know. We I took a little extra with this. You know. You want to make it nice. You want to make it nice. And you're not going to do that every night. You're not going to fold napkins and stuff them down in your water glasses every night. Here's herbs and spices. And um, herbs that you can mix together to make your own blends. That's a he real good helpful hint. And here's pan basics. Maybe you're just starting housekeeping and if you don't know what housekeeping means, that means you just got married and you moved out of mommy and daddy's and you got your own pantry to fill. Here is a list of things you should have in your pantry at all times and that just helps you to know that you need some baker's chocolate, baking powder, baking soda, breadcrumbs plain and seasoned. You all know, you seasoned cooks know Every one of those things I just said, it's handy to have it on hand at all times because you don't know when you need to stir up a pie or something. You always need flour and you always need honey and you always need ketchup and you always need lemon juice. Uh, these are just some of the staples. And here is uh, packaged canned foods. You always need beans. You always need dried beans in your, not a can of beans. You need some dried pintos, some dried lima beans. You need some dried black beans. Those can be saved for years to come and then you can use them but they're good to eat too. You always need some canned fruit in there. Uh, you always need some cereal, some dry soup mix and you always need some cream of. And what is cream of? Cream of <laughs> is that soup that you hear about in every recipe, every casserole, every southern thing you'll ever <laughs> fix. Add a cream of mushroom soup. Add a cream of chicken soup. Had a cream up, celery soup. So I call them cream ups. And sometimes when the holiday's coming up, I say, Mama, do you need any cream ups? And, oh, there's the bell. Here See here. Uh, Deanna? See? It's flipping on you. C-O-U-E-Y. Deanna Cooey? Alright, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so Deanna, you send me your address, and we are going to get you out a cookbook in the mail, and it won't be long, Deanna, because the cookbook should be here this week. I'm going to write your name down, PM me, PM me, and PM means to go to our page, go to private message or message, hit it, and you can go in and leave a comment. And your comment, I want you to say, I want a cookbook. Please send it to this address, and I'll see your name on your um trying to write. My mind and my mouth don't work together at the same time. C-O-U-E-Y. 
congratulations. Deanna. So PM me your address. If you don't want the cookbook, when you win one, just say, John, I don't cook. I don't want the cookbook. And send it to your mama. Send it to your sister. Um, we'll send it wherever you tell me to send it. So uh, that's the way that works. If you just don't want it, you don't want to send us one, say, I'm going to pass. <laughs> and we'll give it to someone else. So you all, um, if you don't feel obligated, but uh, we want you to enjoy it if you will enjoy it. Yeah. Hello, Miss Nola. How are you? Call off their names again before you get off so they'll know. <clears throat> yes, ma'am. The other people will all know. So. Lisa Patrick, Teresa Bascu Shaleev. I think I may have gotten that one or two letters of that right. Um, <laughs> and Deanna. C O U E Y, or is that a V? Covey or Covey or Covey? I've, I've destroyed your last names. So I apologize, um, but you all know who you are. So PM us your addresses. See that right there shows y'all. I try to be as fair as I can, because if I had just picked a name, I'd look for a Smith or something. And say, Here you go, you know, Mary Smith. There is your cookbook. So, uh, the way we set the alarm, because I don't want to pick and choose, and I don't want to spin your names, and all, I just want to be as fair as we possibly can, and random as we possibly can. So, we always want to be fair and upright, and everybody be happy. Um, no one would ever pass on your church cookbook. Oh, thank you, Gina. Um Thank you so much. Congratulations to the ones that won. Thank you, Gloria. That is so sweet of you. Folks, that's all we have today is a little bit of cowboy coleslaw. Now, in the morning, we normally don't come too early uh, live. Um, I'll do Sunday school. How are we going to work that, Mama? When are you going to be cooking? Have a seat there so they can I'm see I'm going to be cooking early. I have to put on a a ham and let it bake. I have to peel 10 pounds of potatoes and let them cook. So I can't wait till you, after you do Sunday school to put all that on. What we may do is, um, hmm, I don't know. We'll have to work it out. Let's just say we'll wing it. So if you don't catch it live, you can catch it on video. Yeah, if you don't catch it live, you don't have to get a big show. You can re-watch it, replay. Um, That's what, what we'll, I recommend instead of getting up. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what we'll do is if we get an opportunity in the morning, uh, we'll show you what we're up to. Maybe a couple of quick lives. Maybe um, one live to cover two or three things. And then I will have to be live for uh, Sunday School Highlights. Probably between 9 and 9.30. That's usually the time frame I shoot for. So some of y'all can get to church and um, and still watch. So we'll do the best we can tomorrow and get it all together. Um, so we hope y'all can be. We was going to the pineapple casserole today. Mama said no, it couldn't. It needs to be cooked in the morning fresh. So that's the reason we're not doing it today. So we're going to do pineapple casserole, some sweet potatoes, you doing casserole, Mama? Yeah, pineapple casserole. You no, know. I mean, you're doing a sweet no. potato? No, I'm just going to open up those cans and put the, the sugar and butter in them and put marshmallows on top. Mm. Simple and easy. Well, that's what I call casserole. Sugar and butter with marshmallows and browned. That's just sweet potatoes with marshmallows. <laughs> you know, the casseroles has got the nuts. What kind of dish you put it in, Mama? Huh? What kind of dish you put it in? A little Pyrex dish. A casserole dish. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I've had to whip it once, don't really Whatever know. Mama wants to call it. But, <laughs> folks, I've called it a cas <laughs> sweet potato casserole with marshmallows. And uh, we're baking. <laughs> we're baking some pre sliced ham. We had it sliced. We got a Kentucky Legend. And oh, uh, it's good. I think it'll be delicious. And we're going to, it's already sliced. We're going to wrap it up good in uh, aluminum foil and uh, cook it good with some water, basically. And that's all we put on it. That's the ingredients for that. Uh, wrap it tight, put it in a pan of water, and cook it. And it's delicious. Okay. 
So we'll be doing that in the morning, and we'll be doing um, Sunday School Highlights, and uh, then it'll be Palm Sunday, folks. Palm Sunday's already here. Yeah, when y'all first told me that, some of y'all told me, nice. I thought, no, that ain't Palm Sunday, is it? Because we were trying to plan a cook-along. We was going to plan it for... Um, this set today. Yeah, we're going to, yeah, today. But uh, and our cook along is going. What did we decide we was going to cook? Seven layer salad. Well, we weren't going to take seven layer salad for Easter dinner, uh, for church. So we're going to put that out to the week after Easter. The cook along. So that's the reason we want to give away a few cookbooks today, just so it won't be so long for another cook along. So we're ready to get ready. Y'all, y'all call it that. Mama and I will say, let's get ready to get ready, meaning. You got stuff you got to do to prepare for whatever you're going to do so you can get ready for something. So we get ready to get ready. And that means everything's laid out. I see every, I see every dish over here on this uh, counter Mama's working on. There's the sweet potatoes. There's the uh, Irish potatoes for the uh, mashed potatoes. Or cream potatoes, as some of y'all call them. And um, then oh, we'll have the ham. Sugar. And the, the brown sugar, everything's laid over here, ready to go. So mama's ready to get ready. Uh, that's another southern thing. <laughs> or my thing. <laughs> no, that every southern lady I know out there, if they've got a church dinner or something coming up, they got their stuff ready. They know what the game plan is. Uh, and they, they're on top of it. Hello from Ohio, Becky. How are you, Becky Patterson? Glad to have you here with us. Uh, Debbie Slaughter, your birthday's tomorrow. Happy birthday. Everybody say happy birthday, happy Debbie. Happy birthday, yeah. Happy birthday, Miss Debbie. Howdy from Texas. Hey, Miss Shannon. We are glad you're on here. Um, I don't know if we'll be back tonight or not. I think we're going to have... Uh, I've got uh, a meeting or something. Mama's got to go. So she's got errands to run. I'm here. Me and Maggie will be here. Me and Maggie may wait till she gets gone and come back on and cook That's or something. That's all right. No, we ain't. I don't cook a lot without Mama, because who wants to cook for just me? Uh, it says, I hope you show the seven-layer salad uh, when you cook it. Miss Miss Keisha, is it? Miss Keisha Childers, we're going to have that as a cook-along. That will be next Saturday's Easter. We'll be doing Easter lunch on Saturday next week so we'll be showing you all that the next saturday we plan lord willing we will be on with the seven layer salad and you can get the ingredients we'll have the ingredients up and you can cook along with us and we can all cook it together and enjoy it together that's what the cook alongs are all about so the cook alongs is where we tell you what we're going to cook ahead of time we don't tell you ahead of time all the time because we don't know most of the time it's a coin toss what we're having for lunch or supper. And no, we don't cook every night, folks. So some nights it's just me and Mama talking. Some nights it's us uh, doing something else or maybe just making a dessert or something. But that's just the way we, we roll. Uh, we do want you all to send in your kids' recipes. Um, have you got any of those yet, Mama? I've not opened all the letters. I've got some. I We've think. got some. We're going to read some of those. All the children's recipes, they are the cutest things. Ask your child how to prepare their favorite meal, even if it's pizza or McDonald's chicken nuggets. It doesn't matter. Just say, whoever, how do you fix macaroni and cheese? And write down whatever they say. Uh, we've had some of the funniest replies and some of the funniest things. And just knowing that in those little minds, that's how they really think it happened is so hilarious. Like we had one that said you make macaroni and cheese and you cook it for 16 hours. Now, isn't that cute? <laughs> so write their recipes and send it in. Maybe you have an older child, maybe 8, 9, 10, 11 and up, whatever age, and they're really cooking. And they really have a recipe. We may be able to cook some of those with them. And uh, that would be a neat neat thing, too, to see what you all are cooking. And see what those older children are cooking. And then we will read their name if you want us to. If you don't want your child's name read, please note on there. Please do not read this online. Uh, <clears throat> even if you want to share it. But... Uh, those are fun things, and we'd like to do some of those as well. Also, we have Hey Mama, so if you want to send in some Hey Mama jokes, we always love to get those. And um, I used to try to look up jokes, but you all have great jokes. See, I got one right quick today. You all have better jokes than I can 
can get. So all of our jokes, uh, the reason I tell people, our jokes should be something that a second grader or first grader could go to school and tell their whole class and not get in trouble. So if you've got a joke that's that clean and that good, share it with us. Send us a letter, put Hey Mama, and you can listen. Mama does not read them. Now Mama is... Yeah. Mama's picky, Mama, but Mama is honest to a fault. I get letters every little bit. Mama will say, here, this is a Hey Mama letter. I don't want to open it. So, uh, and then we also wonder if you wanted to say, uh, Dear Mama and John, uh, we'll do a little advice column kind of thing. Like, you know, they used to back in the 60s and 70s and 80s. I think it was Dear Abby and Dear, there was some other, and, and, Landers. and Landers. and Just fun stuff. Nothing too over the top, nothing controversial. Just fun little stuff. We thought that would be a good little thing to go with. Um, 30th cook 30th is cook along. Is that when it is, Char uh, Charlene? She sounds about. <clears throat> I don't know what it is. That sounds good. 30th would be the cook along. Then it's on a Saturday. Uh, we'll try to come on around 6 o'clock and uh, do it, Lord will. And like I said, that's the day we've planned for seven layers salad. And we'll go over the ingredients and everything with you until that. Mom and John, love eating with you all. Well, thank you, Emily. We love having you with us. Um, Judy Covington, hello. How are you? Hey, Carol. Thank you for jumping on. Hey, Nancy Adams. How are you? Um, <clears throat> so that was Cowboy Coleslaw today, folks. You can watch it on replay. And we'll try to show you as much as we can in the morning. Um, so you can... Uh, See what we're cooking, what we're up to. We probably won't do Southern Sunday lunch tomorrow. No. Unless we do it from the church. And a lot of people don't want on video. You pull out a camera, people run. So uh, it may just be me and Mama, just a quick little snippet. I don't know. We'll see uh, how that rolls. Sometimes just you never want to. You don't feel my plate when I left it. <laughs> Mama, your plate. Really? <laughs> Uh, if you watched last night's video and you seen that one chip crumbled up in the middle of that <laughs> That point. was more than one chip. Mama, I had tons of comments of people saying, Mama, that was one chip. Mama. <laughs> no, it's more than one. Yes, it was, Mama. <clears throat> <laughs> um, thank you, Barbara. Thank you for being here with us. Hey, Debbie, how are you? Tomorrow is just going to be a plate by your day. And probably what we'll do instead of Southern Sunday lunch... We'll probably wait till afterward and we'll come on live once we get back home. Uh, we won't be gone long and we'll have somebody here with Maggie as always because Maggie's at that age, she doesn't do well alone. She doesn't do well alone at all. And so somebody's always here with Maggie. We always work it out one way or another, don't we, Mama? Yeah, try to. We try to. We've got family that's awful gracious to come over and sit with her. Everybody loves Maggie. So it's not hard to say, can you watch Maggie? They'll come running. I uh, love snacks, Sonia. We do too. Hey, Mama, what do you call a pig on a leash? Oh, my goodness. What do you Sherry call a pig Keaton. On, a pig on a leash? Sherry Ice and Keaton. That, a corn dog? No, Mama. That is hilarious. A pig on a leash. <laughs> a pig on a leash. I love it, Sherry. Uh, what do you call a pig on a leash, Mama? Think about what you do with the leash. You lead them. Or you... Pull them. Pull pork. <laughs> hilarious, Sherry. I love that. A pig on a leash is pulled pork. How funny. I love that. We love pulled pork, too. <laughs> Sure, did you make that up? Is that your own? I've never, I've never heard that one before. Oh, wow. <laughs> Are you guys making Easter candy? No. Barbara, I... Mama, that was all of a sudden. That was quick. Well, I can't eat all. I'm not tempting myself. What would you make if you was going to make it, Mama? I'd probably make me a big platter of peanut butter fudge for Easter. <laughs> I need a minute. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to make it. <laughs> I guess that's a no. As you I say, I'd eat Barbara. myself into a mischief if I made that candy. <laughs> we get no candy, Barbara. <laughs> Mama's trying to do better on that sugar, and that fudge is good. We, now, I'm going to tell you, Mama made it for Christmas, and she really did good. I was proud of her. Hey, Donna, how are you? Mama is... Mama is... What did you say? Mama's getting... 
really good with the jokes. Donna, she is good with that stuff. Mama's always been a smart, smart gal. Sure, I have. Hello from Ireland. Hello, Teresa. Hello. It's six degrees here. Oh, six. Miss. Oh, goodness. That made cold chills running over me. Six degrees. Teresa LaFan, that is a cold day. It snowed in Lexington this morning. It did here too. It was beautiful. Uh, peanut butter fudge. Yes, Nancy. It's so good. Uh, yeah, well, there's videos of Mama's peanut butter fudge. You can go back and look at it around Christmas time. Probably right before Christmas, actually. Hey, Barbara. Mama's peanut butter. Mama, you know what? You could take peanut butter fudge and cover it with them little colored Easter M&Ms. Mm -hmm. Have chocolate, peanut butter, and candy. Oh, Oh, well, we'll, we'll have to do without. I love peanut butter fudge. I do, too. It's my favorite. And we have what we call granny fudge. That's the way my granny made it. and so she taught mama to make it. Oh, all y'all's story. So last night, I, I brought up, mama can tell you about how she likes chicken livers. How oh. she grew to like them. And then we just chased a rabbit. We went away, and we didn't come back to it. So, mama, tell them about your chicken liver. Somebody said, how did Mama learn to like chicken livers? <laughs> I said, ooh, we forgot to tell that. Mama, tell them how you came to like them. Well, I miscarried once before Johnny. And my mother-in-law said it's because my blood was too low. So every time she knew I was coming to her house, she fixed chicken livers to fill my blood up. And so when I got pregnant with Johnny, I had chicken livers every time <laughs> I headed towards her house. And I told my husband, I said, I don't like chicken livers, and she fixes them for me. And he says, well, tell her you don't want them, and you're not going to eat them. I said, well, I can't do her that way. So I would eat one little chicken liver to satisfy her. And as I went along, I'd eat two or three. And before Johnny was born, I could sit and eat a little bowl of chicken livers <laughs> without anything with them because I grew to love them because of the way she fixed them. So that's how I learned to love chicken livers is when I was carrying Johnny to please my mother-in-law so she wouldn't worry so much about my eating. <laughs> So you can. And Johnny loves them because I eat them the whole time I was carrying them. You can learn to love them if you don't. Mama did. Mama didn't like them at all. Oh. And now, <clears throat> I would say at least nine times out of ten that we have them is at her suggestion. Yeah. Uh, you deep fry your chicken livers. We do mostly. Uh, we don't use a deep fryer, but we put oil oh. in the pan and we deep fry them. Right. One secret on chicken livers, you know how they splatter. You definitely need a, a screen for sure. But if you'll take your knife and poke every lobe in that chicken liver. But the last time I did that, it popped me anyway. It pops less, I'll put it that way. I uh, must have missed one somewhere. What those pops are is where it builds up that pressure in that lobe. And then when it pops, it splatters. So poke them and that gives that it's steam good. inside of it a way to escape. So try that if you're a chicken liver fryer. And I always use a screen. Don't ever trust any hack or method. Just use that screen just to be sure because you don't want chicken liver on your face or in your eye. Oh, goodness. Uh, be careful. Uh, gizzards. Never tried them. Terry, I've never tried a gizzard. Mama's not either. I don't know why. Maybe some in the family didn't like them. But I would be willing to try them. Uh, I know uh, Donna put on here last night that her dad was wanting them. So, uh, she was going to fix them. I'll have to ask her how hers turned out. Uh, my, my mama cleans the, the blood out of them, Sandra. I haven't heard of that. That may be what mama needs to do. But if you'll poke them, I guess that could drain out whatever you got in. I soak them in salt water a long time. Mama, try peanut butter surprise. What's that? What's that, Barbara? We soak our chicken livers. That helps something. I don't know. Uh, the salt water soaks a lot of the blood. It should color off for a moment. Uh, no, thank you. Don't like them. No, thank you. 
<laughs> Some things you just don't need to learn to like, do you? Um, peanut butter fudge recipe. There's one with cake ice, and I know that. Never tried it, but I've seen it. Livers are much better than gizzards. Is that what you're saying? I've never tried it. Gizzards with gravy and cornbread. What kind of gravy, Kathy Williams? Like, uh, like milk gravy? Or chicken gravy? Bet chicken gravy, right? Uh, you have to cook them a long time to get them tender. Preston, thank you. Never had gizzards and don't want to try them, Brenda. I would try them. I've never had them. Um, hey, Mama. Let's oh, see what this is. Oh, let's go. It's like, it's like chewing gristle. Yuck. Oh, is that Ooh, gizzards, I Joanne? That. I don't want to try that. When I was manager at KF's, is it, what's KFB? Is it KFC? It says, uh, we cook gizzards in the original recipe pressure fryer. Oh, okay. So you pressure cooked them. That would be good, Linda. Linda, I bet you have secrets. The seven herbs, or is it 12? 11, 11 herbs and spices. Have y'all ever read the story of Colonel Sanders? It's a remarkable story. It's a good story to tell you never to give up. And uh, he was in his 70s? 70s when he opened the first one. 50 something. It's a good story, even though I don't remember his exact age. But it's a good story how he was older when he went out in it and he wasn't ready to give up and he he developed KFC. Uh, I don't know if y'all know this or not, but we only live 30 miles from the original KFC. And we've eaten there. It used to be our go-to place when I was a kid. Uh, people come from all over to go to that KFC. Yeah, it don't look anything like it used to, though. Really Mama modeled. says they've remodeled it, and it's not as, but it's, it looks different. It's not like your typical KFC, uh, but it's in the same location, same building. And it's never been closed, so it's the original KFC, and it's still there today. And people are still eating there, probably right now. Uh, uh, let's see, no liver. It's gizzards for me, Laurie. That sounds good. Love chicken livers, Wendy. Folks, we've talked two nights about chicken livers. I think it's time we uh, quit talking about them and start eating them. I think we ought to have some of them. Oh, wow. uh, so maybe this week, Mama, we can come up with some chicken livers. Uh, we're scheduled a lot this week. Mama's so strict. Ooh, she's strict. Some church and different. Okay, Mama. As soon as I'm we not can. making no promises. I'll put as soon as we can, we'll come up with some chicken livers. That's better. All right, folks, we're going to go for now. Uh, we want to come on here, make this cowboy coat slaw, give away a few cookbooks, enjoy the afternoon with you all. And uh, we don't want to keep you all too long. We probably already have. Yeah. Too late for that. Yeah. So we're going to say you'll have a great rest of the evening. Enjoy the snow or sunshine or whatever you're getting. Just enjoy it all. Enjoy tomorrow. It's going to be a wonderful day uh, in whatever the weather is. We'll enjoy it. And we'll see you all sometime in the morning. If nothing else, I'll see you at Sunday School Highlights. And, um, Mama, you got anything to add tonight? No. Just God bless them all. And good night to everybody. Bye-bye. Bye, y'all. Say good night, Mama. Good night, Mama. Very good night. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.